hello students hope you are doing well and i welcome you again in my pm class and this is the third class of the topic throughput accounting and this is this would be the final class of uh, throughput accounting and today's main agenda is to solve one otq that is objective test questions uh, and it was examined in december 2016 uh, the question name is sweet treat bakery and it is the otq and in this otq as you know there are five mcqs question 1 2 3 4 and 5 now uh, i'm not going to switch towards the question and here is the question the question name is sweet treat bakery and it was examined in december 2016 uh, there are three main products and this is one of the challenging question of throughput accounting so i thought to make it a part of the class so you should revise it uh, uh, once uh, again after the class so uh, there are five uh, mcqs related to these uh, this otq or uh, sweet treat bakery that's question number 1 question number 2 question number 3 the theoretical assessment question number 4 and question number 5 again the theoretical assessment so uh, let's first uh, try to read question number 1 and from that perception we will be studying the entire case study and remember as i have said earlier that this is one of the challenging question but it's not difficult it's a little bit challenging because in this question there are three main products and all the products are passing through three different processes which means process 1 process 2 and process 3 and there are three different products as well three different products are being passed through three different stages and obviously any one of the phase stage or the process may be the bottleneck all right so the question number 1 on monday on monday in addition to the baking oven sweet treat bakery has the following process resource available remember one thing if one process is bottleneck on monday it quite may be possible that the next process will become the bottleneck on tuesday on wednesday there may be the different uh, bottleneck resource so it depends on the availability and the required on the particular time period so it is specifically asked that on monday which of the three process if any is a bottleneck activity so uh, we haven't studied the question yet so first of all we need to study the question thoroughly and the main objective behind reading the question number 1 that is the mcq number 1 is that to uh, to know what is basically the requirement the requirement is which of the uh, following process is the bottleneck all right so uh, it's my well assumption that you have already revised the topics of uh, the topics of throughput accounting bottleneck resource return per hour etc and all the uh, the complete chapter so here is the question sweet treats bakery makes three types of cakes that is brownies muffins and cupcakes these three are the products these three are the products all right obviously there is a bakery and there are three types of cakes one thing to be noticed here it is written in a batch size as you have uh, already studied from your basic studies that a cake manufacturer produces a cake in a form of batches and what is a batch a batch is a collection of different identical units that means if i am going to produce a watch that will be model number a123 and it will be in a form of batch that is one batch is equal to 500 units 1000 units 200 or 50 or 400 etc so here the batch size in units are 40 30 and 20 that means in one batch there are 40 units there are 30 units and there are 20 units respectively i should write one batch is equal to now next its selling price per unit material cost per unit labor cost per unit overheads per unit and point to be noted is here it's a minimum demand and it's a maximum demand and the demand is given in the form of units all right 
So we need to uh, study the complete question and that is the information that will be helpful for us to solve the OTQ. It is written that the minimum daily demand is required for a long term contract with the local cafe and must be met. See, the minimum demand must be met. That means there is no second thought. Whatever the minimum demand is that we have made a contract with the local cafe and we must have to meet the minimum demand. The next information here, the cakes are made in batches. This is a very, very important information. The cakes are made in batches. The cakes are not being produced in the form of a single product like a pastry or a cake or whatever. It is being produced in the form of batches using three sequential processes weighing, mixing and baking. Weighing that means um, uh, uh, calculating the weightage of other ingredients and then the materials are getting mixed and then the cakes are there for the purpose of baking and the cakes are ready. The products must be produced in their batches. The products must be produced in their batch sizes but are sold as individual units. In throughput accounting, we are not concerned with the sold. We are concerned with the production. And what is the requirement? There are two kinds of requirement. Remember that. Number one, you must have to meet the minimum daily demand. And the second one is that you need to produce, sorry, you must have to produce the cakes in batches. All right. So remember this thing. Next information is that each batch, now remember uh, the point to be noted is here, it is given for each batch. Each batch of cake requires following amount of time for each processes that is in minutes. That is in minutes. Brownie, muffins and cupcakes. These are minutes. These are minutes per batch. That is 15 minutes to produce one batch, 15, 20 and then so on. All right. So these are the time period mentioned in minutes. We do not need to convert into hours. Uh, let's see how we can solve it. And this is the information. I will study that information few minutes later on. But first of all, remember one thing. Remember one thing. That's very, uh, that's very helpful statement which I'm going to say. Whenever the data is in the form of batches, first of all, you must need to transfer the units into the batch. For example, for example, in one batch, there are 20 units, for example. And now I'm going to say that I will produce 40 units. So you should say that, sir, you are going to produce two batches, not 40 units. You need to measure in the form of batches. Okay. So, Whenever the production is in the form of batches, you need to calculate the number of batches, not the number of units. I'm repeating the example again. For example, there are 20 units in one batch and today in a particular day, I'm going to produce 60 units. So we should measure, not like 60 units, we should measure that we are producing three batches. All right. So here it is a minimum daily demand and this is the maximum daily demand. And in one batch, the units are already mentioned here, 40, 30, and 20. So first of all, we need to calculate the number of batches that uh, are required to produce minimum and the maximum. Here you go for the solution. And here we need to calculate, first of all, number of batches. Number of batches, all right? We need to calculate first number of batches. And I'm now going to draw for three columns that is brownie, that is muffins and that is cupcakes. All right. I will be writing for two things. Why two things? Number one is my minimum demand. Number two is my maximum demand all right 
so how i will be measuring this thing minimum and the maximum demand let's find it out the minimum demand is 30 units and in one batch there are 40 units see how you, you will be calculating number of batches how do you calculate number of batches the number of batches is basically calculated as number of batches calculated as demand divided by number of units in a batch number of units in a batch and that is the demand is 30 units and in one batch there are 40 units so you will be calculating like 30 divided by 40 and the answer would be uh, you should also calculate it by yourself that is 30 divided by 40 and the answer is 0 0.75 remember this is not a batch the batch may be either one batch two batch three batch four batch it will be in an absolute figure i cannot say that i am conducting a class of 30 students 40 students but i will be saying that this is this is one batch for example if in any batch there are 20 units i will not be saying that i am teaching half batch this is a full batch of uh, 20 units so make it round off because the batch will be either one batch or two batch or three batch or zero batches and that is one batch all right that is a minimum uh, requirement to produce one batch similarly we will uh, we will be going for 20 units divided by 30 and that will be 20 divided by 30 obviously it will not be in a absolute figure that will be 0 0.67 but what is 0 0.67 batches no the batch will be either one or two so that will be again one batch so, uh, similarly you go for the cupcakes and in cupcakes there are 10 divided by 20 and that will be again 10 divided by 20 10 divided by 20 that is 0 0.5 but what is 0 0.5 it's not a sensible measurement or uh, that is uh, i am making half batch no either one or two okay so again it will be one batch so what i'm trying to say that uh, there is a minimum demand to produce at least one batch one batch and one batch for all the three products respectively and how about the maximum demand it's 140 divided by 40 it's 140 divided by 40 that will be giving me the answer calculated by yourself students it's 3.5 but again what is 3.5 no sir it will be four batches next 90 over 30 that means totally uh, there is a demand for 90 units and in one batch there are 30 units so that's a very simple calculation 90 divided by 30 that is 3 batches obviously it is already the rounded off figure 3 batches and next 100 divided by 20 and that will be 100 divided by 20 and that is 5 batches what was the main point which I had emphasized on I did not solve question number one listen I did not solve question number one what I did I just transferred number of units in the form of batches why because I am not producing in the form of units I am producing in the form of batches so we should have batches because it's not given in the question for example if this information the highlighted information the number of batches would have been given in the question I would not be solving that because first of all we need how many batches are there in order to meet the demand so I can confidently say that uh, there are there's a minimum demand to produce at least one batch for all the three products and then four three and five all right so uh, it's not uh, we can say it's a five batches it is that at at least one batch and maximum are four batches that means maximum are four batches all right so here you go uh, for the next uh, solution 
this is my calculated figure for the number of batches now I am solving question number one that is on Monday we need to identify bottleneck resource we need to identify bottleneck resource all right remember one thing remember one thing that's a very uh, that's a very good information which I'm now going to share it with you that's how to calculate the bottleneck bottleneck is any resource bottleneck is any resource due to which we cannot produce the demand but the point here is that which demand minimum or maximum obviously maximum how uh, let's take an example of only one product that is cupcake for example its minimum demand one batch and maximum five batches that means my entire in my market the entire demand for this cupcake is five batches in which I just made a contract with any local cafe to produce to supply the one batch but the demand is not more than five batches so that means bottleneck is that resource which is not allowing you to meet the maximum demand so I think I should write this statement which uh, which is the bottleneck the bottleneck resource which cannot produce which cannot uh, produce or we can say which cannot fulfill which cannot fulfill the maximum demand which cannot fulfill the what the maximum demand so uh, now we are going towards the question okay so let's take an example of uh, of this uh, question number one that is on Monday these resources are available that means minutes available in the weighing process in the mixing process see uh, this is a very uh, good uh, trick for solving the MCQ option C is eliminated why because in options in the given information we have only weighing and mixing and option D is also eliminated why because there is no bottleneck it quite may be possible that there is no bottleneck but it is the highly chance that the question is of throughput accounting and there will be the bottleneck that is the supporting theory of constraints this is the supporting the theory the theory of constraint so these are the minutes available 240 and 180 and what's the need see in vain and mixing in weighing 15 15 and 20 minutes to produce one batch to produce how many batches one batch one batch requires 15 minutes 15 minutes and 20 minutes 15 15 and 20 <clears throat> and we have maximum demand that is four batches three batches and five batches and remember that bottleneck resource is that resource due to which due to the shortage we are not able to produce the maximum demand all right so uh, how do we calculate this thing we need to calculate that is number one on Monday I think I should write like that way on Monday there is a process wing there is a process mixing I am using this calculator and you should also use your calculator here we need and here that is available the time time so that is that is time in minutes time in minutes all right so see that there is a maximum demand for three and five batches all right so there are four batches into 15 minutes and then three batches and again 15 minutes and the next one is the 20 minutes 15 plus 5 batches multiply by 20 minutes so in minutes time in minutes I need I need uh, uh, what's the time the calculated time 
Just calculate it with your calculator. That is 2.05. I actually need 2.05 minutes. And what is the available? The available is 2.40. The available is 2.40. That means it's okay. I need 2.05 minutes but on Monday the weighing process has the availability of 240 minutes. So that means it's not a bottleneck. The answer is mixing. But again, we need to calculate. It quite may be possible that uh, mixing is even not a bottleneck. There is not a bottleneck because it is the option available. So let us uh, again four batches, three batches and five batches and what's the time needed 20 16 and 12 20 16 and 12 are the minutes required to produce each batch 20 16 and 12 and that is 20 16 and 12 and what's the time needed 4 multiplied by 20 plus 3 multiplied by 16 plus 5 multiplied by 12 I actually need 188 minutes but unfortunately we have 180 that is only the shortage of 8 minutes even the shortage of 1 minute that process will be termed as a bottleneck because it is not available as per my maximum demand so the availability is 180 now here is the question mark so that means that means we can say that we can say that here is a shortage that means mixing is a bottleneck mixing is a bottleneck it is not necessary that on monday mixing is a bottleneck even the whole week the mixing process is a bottleneck no it's not necessary it depends on the particular time and the availability so that means for my this specific question the option is B that is mixing okay so here you go for this solution that on Monday this is a simple way to find the bottleneck and what is bottleneck any resource any resource due to the shortage you are not able to produce the maximum demand all right so let's now move on to the next requirement the next requirement number is requirement number two on Wednesday but first of all read out the requirement assuming that sweet bakery sweet treat bakery wants to maximize the profit what is the optimal production plan remember that optimal production plan we have already covered the optimal production plan in when we were solving it through the marginal costing the limiting factor remember one thing that when you are solving through marginal costing you give a ranking to the products based on the contribution per limiting factor but here the treatments are different see the optimal production plan we have to rank our products and the ranking will be dependent on the basis of return per hour not the contribution per limiting factor because we are not studying the marginal costing we are studying the throughput accounting and in throughput accounting we get sales we get direct material cost, we get throughput return and we divide it by bottleneck resource. So here you go for the ranking criteria. So uh, what is actually the ranking criteria? Um, the ranking criteria, let's first of all differentiate. This is marginal costing and this is my throughput accounting. I think my writing is readable. It's marginal and it's throughput. Okay, so uh, the ranking criteria is that what are the ranking criteria? Here we get sales, we get all variable cost, and we get contribution. All right, so in that contribution, we divide by limiting factor.
and we got contribution per limiting factor. LF stands for limiting factor. So that was a marginal costing and we had already done this thing. But now we are studying the throughput accounting and in throughput accounting, and in throughput accounting, we need to maximize the maximum throughput. How? The ranking criteria would be sales, direct material cost only, then you will be getting the term throughput return. That is throughput return. And you will be dividing by bottleneck. And you will be getting the figure which is known as return per bottleneck hour. So this terminology is the return per bottleneck hour. Here you go for the ranking criteria under the um, uh, throughput accounting. All right, students. So remember that thing that uh, if you are uh, having a question that that is to produce an optimal production plan under throughput accounting, first of all, you need to calculate throughput. I mean, return per bottleneck hour. That is the bottleneck hour. So this would be the basis in order to produce the optimal production plan. And optimal production plan means no more wastages. The production units that will maximize, that will yield maximum output and maximum profit making. So uh, let's now switch towards the question again. Here is the question. See, on Wednesday, the mixing process is identified as a bottleneck process on Wednesday. Now the Monday has been passed, the Tuesday has been passed and today is the Wednesday. Wednesday, again, it quite may be possible that it's a coincidence but as but the given information on Wednesday mixing again is a bottleneck process. On this day, only 120 minutes are available. See that on uh, Monday, this MCQ number two is not connected with MCQ number one. Every MCQ uh, is independent. That all the MCQs are related with a standard case study. It's not related to the previous MCQ. Now that is the beauty of the OTQ questions. So. Uh, assuming that Sweet Treats Bakery wants to maximize the profit, what is the optimal production plan? And on Wednesday, there are only 120 minutes available. Forget Monday, forget Tuesday. Now focus on, now focus on the Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, we need to produce the optimal production plan. But point to be noted is there, in this question, it was written that you must have to produce the minimum demand units because you have made a contract with a local cafe. All right, so my production will be split into minimum and then towards the maximum. And what was the minimum demand? What was the minimum demand? The minimum demand was to produce at least one batches of every product, one batch of every product. All right, so uh, first of all, we will be producing one batch, one batch, one batch, and then we will be going towards three batch, two batch, and four batches because the uh, we will not be uh, doing the sum of these things. This is the maximum four batches. All right. So uh, here we go for the uh, solution. Number two. Number two, the day is Wednesday. And here we are having a question that is the optimal production plan. All right, that is an optimal production plan. And which process is a bottleneck? Sir, the bottleneck is mixing. And we have only available 120 minutes. 120 minutes are only the available resource that is on Wednesday. All right. So, um, which process is a bottleneck? Mixing. And in mixing, and in mixing, first of all, we need to uh, identify the minutes 20, 16, and 12. These are the minutes required to produce one batch of uh, individual products one batch of brownie, one batch of muffins, and one batch of cupcakes. Just remember the figure 20. 16 
and 12. These are the time in minutes and there are one, one and one batch. All right. So how I will be doing this thing like in order to make the more interactive, I use different colors. So uh, this is my minimum demand. This is my minimum demand. Uh, but again, but again, we cannot produce. What, where is the ranking? Where is the ranking? See, we do not have ranking. So first of all, we need to calculate, we need to have the ranking. Then we will be producing the optimal production plan. All right. So we do not have the ranking. So uh, there are three products that is brownie, muffins and cupcakes. That is selling price because remember the information was given. The information was given 1.5, 1.4, and 2. 1.5, 1.4, and 2. Material cost 0 0.25, 0 0.15, and 0 0.25. Direct material 0 0.25, 0 0.15, and 0.25. So here we go to calculate the term throughput. But remember one very important thing. I will be using the different color as I have said in order to make it more visible and interactive. That's 1.5 per unit. That's 1.5 per unit. That's 1.5 per unit. And that direct material is also per unit per unit and per unit. So naturally the throughput result will also be per unit but we do not need per unit we need in the form of batches how we will be calculating that. First of all we should uh, minus this thing 1.5 minus 0 0.25 that is dollar 1.25. Now that is 1.4 minus 0 0.15 that is dollar 1.25. 25 again and then 2 minus 0 0.25 that is dollar 1.75 see the, uh, the these are throughput return per unit but we do not need per unit why because the production is in the form of batches and the time of the bottleneck is also being measured in the form of batches. Whenever the production is in batches, so there is batch, only batch, all right? So how many units are there in a batch? 40, 30, and 20. Multiply 40, multiply 30, and then multiply 20. So that figure will now be throughput per batch the throughput per batch so we will be giving the term as throughput per batch and this will be the throughput per unit that was only the trick in this uh, th there is a complexity in this question but now I think uh, it's now easy 1.25 multiplied by 40 that's 50 per batch 1.25 Multiply by 30, that's now 37.5. And then 1.75 multiply by 20, that's now 35. And what is this? This is 50 per batch. This is 37.5 per batch. This is again per batch. All right. So now we are having the bottleneck. That will be the bottleneck per batch. That will be the bottleneck per batch. Not on per unit because it is given in the question. That is per batch. Each batch. That is 20, 16 and 12. 20, 16 and 12. That is 20. That is 16. And that is 12. And that is bottleneck time per batch. All right. So this would be the, this would not be now the return per hour, that is the return per minute. So simple, because here are the minutes. 
So 50 upon 20, that is dollar 2.5 per minute. 37.5 divided by 16, that is 2.4, 2.34 per minute. And here you go for 35 divided by 12, that is 2.92, that is per minute. Now give the ranking, which product uh, should be made first, that's giving me the high, highest figure, number one first and then second and then third. We will have to follow this ranking in order to produce the optimal production plan. Now the ranking criteria is return per hour. What is the ranking criteria? Ranking criteria is my return per hour. But here that is return per minute because of the question. So now my production plan will be split into two categories, number one minimum and then the maximum. But the sequel will be followed first cupcakes, second brownie and third muffins. All right. So here we go for the final optimum production plan. That is minimum demand. We have bottleneck. That is mixing and that's only available 120 minutes. That's only 120 minutes that is available to me on that particular Wednesday. So the minimum demand, the ranking would be first cupcake, second brownie, and third muffins. There is a common sense. Whenever there is a requirement in order to produce the minimum demand, for sure, there would be enough resources that my minimum demand would be met. So, uh, be confident for the minimum demand because as it is written in the question that minimum demand must be produced. So, that means there would have been the enough resources. So, one batch multiply by, multiply by, that is the time, the time of mixing. So cupcake, brownie and then muffins because uh, we have just calculated the ranking. Cupcake, brownie and then muffins, all right. So first of all, I am going towards the cupcake that is 12, 12 minutes, all right. So here we go for 12 minutes and then 20 minutes and then 16 minutes. So what is the requirement? That is 12 minutes. That is 20 minutes, that is 16 minutes. So that means we need these time period in order to produce at least minimum demand, which is the requirement of the question because we have made a contract with a local cafe. So what are the remaining time, what are the remaining time that is 12 minutes, 20 minutes and then 16 minutes. It will be utilized by in order to produce a minimum demand. And then now we need to calculate it. 120 minus 12 minus 20 minus 16. That is 72 minutes are remaining. And that 72 minutes will now be used to produce the maximum demand following the same ranking criteria. So here we go for the maximum demand. Here we go for the maximum demand. Maximum demand. So that now will be used for the maximum demand. And the ranking criteria will be, will be the same, obviously. First, we will be producing cupcakes. And then second, we will be producing the uh, brownie and then muffins. Now see, what was the maximum demand? The maximum demand was five batches of cupcake. 
out of which five batches we had produced one batch so remaining we are left with only four batches in order to cope up with the maximum demand all right so this is the maximum maximum demand this is the range minimum one maximum five that is the range of the demand so what are the five uh, what uh, what is the maximum demand for the cupcakes now remaining four batches and it needs 12 minutes it needs 12 minutes that means 12 minutes so we need 4 multiplied by 12 that is 36 4 multiplied by 12 that is 4 multiplied by 12 that is 48 sorry that was a calculative error uh, we need 48 minutes that means we have enough time we have enough time that we can produce the maximum demand of cupcake and that is we will be left with 72 minus 48 that is 24 minutes would now be left and secondly we are here to produce brownie and in brownie there was a minimum demand of one batch we had met and the maximum demand is four batches but now we will be producing only three batches in order to cope up with the maximum demand so let's find it out so here we go for the three batches multiply by brownie 20 minutes so three multiply by 20 here we need three multiply by 20 that is 60 oops there is again the shortage we cannot produce even the maximum demand of brownie that means the muffins will be would be nil because it needs 60 and again there is a question mark that we have only 24 minutes available so it is not possible for me so what is the maximum possibility that is 24 divided by 20 24 that is the available time and this is a time per batch So that means 24 divided by 20, that means 1.2. Obviously, uh, there will be the one batch. It will not be one, this would be one batch. So my production is now finished. That is one batch, that is maximum four batches, all right? So there is no, uh, there is no availability for muffins. Sorry, we cannot produce, that's no availability time no more time sorry so let's find out for the uh, for the option because our question is solved but the question is in the option of units the question is not in the form of the batches the question is in the form of the units the question is playing with us we should play accordingly so what would be the what would be the uh, the production that is you had produced cupcakes you had produced brownie I'm following the ranking and then muffins uh, the minimum and the maximum and that is the total so uh, uh, what we had produced we had produced one batch one batch and one batch and what's the maximum the maximum was um, the maximum was four batches because the maximum demand was five batch four and then one and here sorry so muffins zero here is four and here is that was one batch so that means we had total totally produced five batches and then we had produced um, two batches and then we produced one batches all right so these were my uh, production this were this was my production but the question is in the form of units batches batches and batches now see the question 
How many units are there in batches? 20, 40 and 30. 20 units. That means 20 units. So that means 100 units of cupcakes. And then 40 units. Multiply by 40. That would be 80 units. 80 cakes. And then one batch that is 30. Multiply by 30. And there you go for the 30 units. So that means 180 and 30. This combination will now be available in option 180 and 30. And that is 130 and 80. The option is A, that is 80 brownie, 30 muffins and 100 cupcakes. That was our tricky question. Uh, since I was explaining and sometimes I used to repeat my words so that would be the time taken because right now I am teaching in a slow manner that you people can easily observe. Uh, basically the point is that uh, don't need to uh, get panicked because the question is usually balanced. Here we are for the learning and if you uh, know the throughput accounting tricks and concepts you can easily solve within minutes. So uh, the option is A. All right. This is my option. Now, number three. Number three is basically, you can uh, see it is, uh, which of the following statement will improve TPAR? Please place a tick in the boxes in the table shown below. I will be writing tick, 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 whatever. But first of all, we need to, we need to study each and every MCQ. See, the question is always balanced. That is attainable from the student perspective. Number one, which of the following would, uh, would, would improve TPAR? Uh, Sweet Bakery has done a detailed review of the products, cost and processes and identified potential actions to improve the throughput accounting ratio. Number one, the cafe will be given a loyalty discount. Loyalty discount on selling price. Imagine, if I will be giving the discount on my selling price, that means my throughput will be low. So that will not improve, that will not improve my TPAR. You have to place a tick on not to improve. Because if it would be written that increase the selling price, probably you would be taking, would improve the TPAR. But giving a discount means reducing your inflows, your sales. Next, a bulk discount on flour and sugar is available from supplier. Mm, bulk discount. Think, what if, imagine my raw material cost is $3 per kg, for instance, if I will be having a bulk discount on direct material, it would, uh, it would be better for me because it will reduce the material cost and increase the throughput accounting. So it will improve my TPAR. Number three. There is additional demand for the cupcakes in the market. Demand. Remember the uh, last class MCQ. Even the demand would be, for example, the demand is now 100 units. What if the demand would be 2000 units? It will not increase my throughput. The throughput will be increased if I will be able to produce, not the demand. So it will not improve my TPAR. And next, the rent, the rent is a part of your conversion cost that is overheads of the premises has been reduced for the next year. Congratulations. If you would be successful in uh, a negotiation with the uh, property owner or you will be switching towards another factory that your rent would be reduced. So congratulations, your cost would be low and your TPAR would be improved. So you just uh, in an examination. Uh, you will be having such kind of uh, question presentation. You just have to tick and tick and tick on the boxes. All right. So let's now move on. The fourth requirement on Friday. The fourth requirement is off on Friday. So um, first of all, we should study the requirement. How much profit will increase? Focus on the word increase. That means you are having already earning and there are some additional opportunity. Okay, I'm not going to demonstrate first, then we will be solving this question. If, if the company hires 
the new oven and produces as many cupcakes as possible. Uh, question number three had been done. Question number three had been done. Uh, first of all, I would like to explain one thing. Note. The note is that whenever, whenever you are earning something and you are having extra something, for instance, so what would be the thing? I'm now going to demonstrate one thing first. Remember your existing earning. Your existing earning. This is just a example. This is just an example, not related to this question, but we will be applying this uh, thing on the next question. For example, your existing earning is dollar hundred, and there is something, some extra work. There is something, for example, extra work, and then your total earning is now total earning is now 160. Remember that you are earning 100 from your existing work and when you will adopt some extra work, your total earning would be 160. So that means your extra benefit, your extra benefit is $1.60 and obviously when there is something extra, so it will also cost you extra. So there would be some extra cost. For example, it's 10. So that means your 50 is your extra profit. It's extra profit. All right. Focus on the word extra and that will be known as your increase in profit. Remember one word only extra work, extra cost extra benefit and that is your increase in the profit all right so we need to focus on the word extra in this uh, specific uh, mcq that will be on friday now what will uh, what's the event on friday let's study together on friday due to a local food festival all right remember there is a extra food festival and remember that thing, we are now going to produce something extra other than the maximum demand in order to meet the extra requirement of the food festival, all right? So there would be extra income, there would be extra cost, there would be extra profit. All right. Uh, so due to the local food festival at the weekend, Sweet Bakery is considering increasing its production of cupcakes. These cupcakes can be sold at festival at the existing selling price. The company has unlimited capacity of for weighing and mixing. Remember one thing, there is no problem of weighing, there is no problem of mixing, but its existing three ovens are already fully utilized. Therefore, in order to supply cupcakes, Sweet Treats Bakery will need to hire another identical oven at a cost of $1.45 per day. So that means we are now uh, in a position to calculate something extra, but that would be specifically related to Friday only. So uh, we need to study this information, which I had ignored at the start of the question, and that is the, and that is the information, all right? That is the information. The baking stage of the process is done in three ovens, which uses for eight hours a day. All right, eight hours a day. That means my bakery, or you can say the factory, the bakery can be open eight hours for a day. A total 1440 available minutes. Ovens have capacity of one batch per cake, regardless of product type. So that means Baking is a bottleneck resource on uh, on Friday, on the day of Friday, because weighing and mixing are unlimited, and the product is cupcake. So I am removing these uh, noted uh, things: baking and cupcake. Baking and cupcake. Why? Because on Friday, I'll show you. Because on Friday, local food festival. Unlimited for weighing and mixing, that means the only problem is with baking. And you are now in a position to produce cupcakes. 
So what's happening on Friday? What is happening on Friday? That is on Friday, on Friday, we are now going to produce extra cupcake. But problem here, problem means bottleneck. Problem means bottleneck. Bottleneck is baking. And to make one batch, it needs 120 minutes. It was mentioned in the question. See that. 120 minutes. 120 minutes to produce one batch. So 120 minutes, that means if I divide by 120 minutes divided by 60, so that means 2 hours. 2 hours per batch. Alright? That's extra cupcake we are now going to produce. And the total and the total hours are 8 hours in a day. And we need 2 hours to produce one batch. So, what is the maximum production? What is the maximum production? Maximum production that is 8 hours divided by 2 hours and that means 4 batches extra. Depending on the availability of resources on a particular day of Friday, we can maximum produce 4 batches but focus on the word 4 extra batches. We can maximum produce 4 extra batches for the festival, food festival. Alright. So, the question is not asking that what are the extra production. The question is asking for the extra increase in profit. Alright. And the product name is cupcake. Remember that thing. Okay. So, what is the throughput? Uh, what is the throughput on, on Friday? Uh, from question number one, cupcake its throughput was because in throughput we had already deducted selling price minus direct material cost and that is if we if we refer from question number sorry question number two from question number two here is the question number two cupcake the throughput was 35 per batch and I'm just referring that figure from question number two 35 per batch so, from question number 2, the throughput is $35 per batch. Throughput is the return after selling price, selling price minus material cost. And we are producing 4 extra batches. That is the story on Friday. That's the story on Friday, alright. So we are having extra throughput and that is 35 multiplied by 4 is giving me 140 and there is extra cost there is extra cost in the in the bakery that is 45 for that day that is dollar 45 we need we are having extra throughput and we are having the extra cost so deduct this thing 140 minus 45 that is dollar 95 and that 95 is your extra benefit that 95 is your extra benefit all right so it is written in option c here we go for option c Congratulations, we had solved another question. But remember that thing, whenever it is being asked that what is the increase or decrease. So that means we are having something existing and we are going for something extra. So that is extra contribution, I mean extra throughput contribution, extra cost and extra benefit. That is my increase in profit. Extra profit. 
all right so uh, we are only left with one mcq and that is the theoretical assessment so i am writing something over there this is the last mcq and then the throughput accounting chapter is finished in previous week the weighing process was bottleneck <clears throat> the weighing process was bottleneck in a previous week and resulting throughput accounting was 1.45 which of the following statements for tpar is true remember one thing weighing process was bottleneck weighing process was bottleneck number 1 the bakery's operating cost exceeded total throughput contribution generated from the three products the bakery operating cost exceeded no it is it is not possible that if your cost is greater than your throughput that means the tpar would be less than 1 option 1 is wrong because it is in a profit it is in a profit state number one statement was that it is basically the reverse theory what might had done that is the bakery operating cost exceeded the total throughput no the bakery operating cost exceeded the total throughput so that means if my operating cost would have been increased the throughput accounting would have been less than one so it would result tpar less than one so it is a wrong statement number two less idle time in the mixing department improved tpar and number three improved efficiency in the weighing process this is false this is true option number one why because if tpar was greater than one that is 1.45 that means profit and how how this thing would have been achieved through improvement in through improvement or we can say increasing efficiency in bottleneck because throughput accounting focuses on the bottleneck resource so if uh, if my throughput was tpar was 1.45 that means weighing process would have been improved all right and in question number 2 it is saying that less idle time in the mixing department mixing is a non bottleneck and we are not focusing on the non bottleneck and that is the thing improved efficiency in the weighing process and weighing process is my bottleneck so that's why option number a is correct option and statement number 3 is the only statement which is correct so uh, we have completed this throughput accounting chapter. Now your task is that must revise this topic in, uh, and this OTQ as well uh, and see the complexity. And wish you good luck for your for the topic revision. And till here today, we will be meeting in our next class with a new topic. Bye bye. Take care.